I read that Melvin Purvis had more arrests than anybody at the Bureau at right. that time. What right. do you think made him so great at his job and accomplish this particular task? He, he holds that record to this day. You know, yeah. He holds the record for taking down more public enemies than any other agent uh, to this day. Um, he was uh, uh, very popular with his men. Um, he treated his men incredibly well. Uh, he was a very good leader. Um, he had a great vision. He had great integrity. Um, he was very capable of what he did. He, he had grown up hunting, um, coming from the country. Um, and he was able uh, 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 to uh, achieve extraordinary success at a very young age. Um, I think he just had an inner uh, integrity, which unfortunately he felt was compromised ultimately um, during his time in the Bureau and resulted in him uh, quitting. Yeah, it probably took a lot of balls for him to stand up to his boss and he, our men can't do this, right? Well, th there was a, uh, Hoover was a brilliant visionary and uh, ultimately, um, you know, his, his vision uh, came to create, you know, the excellent organization that we have nowadays. But this is the birthing pains that we're seeing at this point. And in order to achieve uh, short-term success, he requested of his men um, actions which uh, Purvis certainly felt was, were, were morally uh, abhorrent uh, to his nature. And so in spite of his incredible success, I think that he felt that he paid too high of a price and that's why he, he quit the Bureau so, so uh, soon after taking Dillinger down. You also described him as the Clark Gable of the Bureau. Right. Can you elaborate on that? Right. <laughs> well, that was what he was called at the time. Uh, you know, I think, um, and uh, Dick Tracy, I just remembered, somebody reminded me, um, was, uh, was based upon uh, a Melvin Purvis as well. Um, he just cut a very uh, a dashing figure compared to most agents of the day. Uh, he was very dapper. He wore the finest suits. He drove the finest car. He uh, uh, rode horses in the English riding uh, style. Um, he was a real gent, you know. Yeah. You also said there were some similarities between him and Dillinger. Um, uh, all I mean in that is, is just in the press's fascination with the two of them. Oh, okay. You know, um, the press really uh, um, uh, put the both of them uh, on the front of uh, so many newspapers. And this was actually something that uh, was uh, something which Dillinger enjoyed a great deal. And he was wonderful at uh, uh, marketing himself. Um, Purvis, however, was very uncomfortable with that and always went out of his way to try to credit uh, the agency as a whole and Hoover uh, for any success. Okay. Obviously, you are very detail-oriented in your performances, and Michael Mann is very detail-oriented in his filmmaking. Yeah. How did you two come together, and did he help you get deeper? Is that possible? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, no. How? It's a wonderful experience working with Michael. He's a fascinating man, and I think one of the finest filmmakers around. You know, he approaches every movie um, uh, uh, like an investigation. You know, he, he did make a great detective. Um, he, he has an encyclopedic knowledge of each and every uh, subject that he uh, tells a story about. Um, he's very thorough and incredibly articulate, you know, and uh, very satisfying to work with uh, such a man. And how was it training with the guns? Um, <laughs> that, that, was, uh, that was enjoyable, you know, uh, the, uh, the guns were fairly simple to uh, handle, you know, um, and, uh, uh, and Purvis was somebody who was very, very capable with weapons. Okay, uh, thank you so much. All right, thanks.